Welcome to this delicious journey through Savannah. Are you tired of not knowing where to eat when you visit this charming city? Do you want to savor the best flavors Savannah has to offer? Well, you're in the right place. I'll provide you with mouth-watering solutions to your dining dilemmas. I'll share six amazing spots for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert so you can make the most of your visit. Let's get into it. First up, breakfast. You can satisfy your morning cravings at the beautiful 22 Square, right here at Andaz Savannah. 22 Square is a cozy restaurant located in the lobby of the Andaz Savannah Hotel. They serve breakfast from 6.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., Monday through Sunday. They serve up modern, southern-inspired dishes from locally grown produce and sustainable ingredients. Some of my favorite dishes include the avocado toast for $15. My husband likes the build your own omelet served with breakfast potatoes and toast for $18. And he often orders the two eggs any style with toast, breakfast potatoes, and a choice of meat for $14. Breakfast for two typically costs us around $59 with beverages. Number two on our list is a place we like for lunch. It's a quick trip to Tybee Island, just a short drive away to Bubba Gumbo's. Bubba Gumbo's is the place to be for a fantastic seafood lunch. They serve fresh caught seafood prepared at the shack located on the shrimp docks of Tybee Island Marina. Now I'm not gonna lie, the place looks like it could use a fresh coat of paint, some new seating, and a good wiping down. But in all honesty, it looks like what you would expect from a shack that serves up authentic seafood from the local waters. According to their website, they call it a waterfront fish shack that serves the day's catch and fried shellfish in a homey nautical themed setting. We ordered the crab cake dinner with the choice of two sides and the seafood combo where you get fried flounder, shrimp, and two sides. Everything was prepared upon ordering, the seafood tasted fresh, and the food came to the table hot. Our total before tip came to $55.64. Now the ambiance aside, I must say that Bubba Gumbo serves some of the best seafood we've had in a long while, and we give that food a 10 out of 10. We also rate Bubba Gumbo's a 10 out of 10 for the authentic nautical fish shack experience. This was our first time eating there, and it won't be our last. Before I share the next restaurant, let me share a few do's and don'ts if you plan to take the drive out to Bubba Gumbo's. First, do sit inside if you go during the warmer months and you don't want to constantly swat flying insects from your food. Two, don't use the restroom outside the restaurant. I was told by the Bubba Gumbo staff that the one outside is not clean. Three, do head out back to the docks to see the Lazarado Creek and the boats in the water. It's such a unique experience if you've never experienced a fishing community. As the day went by, we worked off Bubba Gumbo's lunch with sightseeing and local activities. Some of the landmarks we visited are the town squares, the parks, and Jones Street, often referred to as one of the prettiest streets in Savannah, if not all of America. Do you wanna see a video of things to do in Savannah, Georgia? Just let me know down in the comment section and let me know at the end which restaurant you plan to try from this video. By late evening, we'd worked up an appetite and decided to head back to the hotel for some appetizers right here on number three on our list, which is 22 Square Bar. 22 Square Bar is where artists come to perform on the weekends. While enjoying the performance, we enjoyed a sampling of hot honey and chicken waffles which was a chicken tender served on top of a waffle with a hot honey drizzle. We also tried the Cajun red beans and rice fritter, which was a mixture of red beans and rice deep fried. After dinner, we decided to take a walk over to number four on our list, which is Leopold's ice cream. Leopold's ice cream is located in the heart of downtown and easy to spot. It has a nostalgic ice cream parlor facade and is next door to the large vertical scad sign on East Broughton near Abercorn Street. If you're like me and wondering what scad stands for, it's for the Savannah College of Art and Design located directly across the street. Leopold's is notorious for having long lines. When we drove past earlier in the day, the line was down the street and the same was true when we went later on that night. We waited in line for about 30 minutes. And what also made the wait tolerable was just my anticipation of seeing the nostalgic atmosphere of this shop that seems to be frozen in time. 
If you've made it this far and you're finding the video helpful, please take a minute to tap the like button. Doing that lets YouTube know when my videos are a match for you. Now let's get into what makes Leopold a must visit destination when in Savannah. Leopold's ice cream has so many delicious flavors, including caramel swirl, which is a homemade caramel swirled into caramel ice cream. They also have banana ice cream made with real bananas and the flavor I ordered, which was the honey, almond, and cream made using Savannah Bee Company honey and fresh roasted almonds inspired by SCAD. And the ice cream isn't the only thing you can get at Leopold's. They have old fashioned fountain sodas, floats, sundaes, and fresh baked desserts. Now let's fast forward to day two. To start the day, you can head over to the Thompson Savannah Hotel for breakfast at Fleeting. The restaurant is located on the ground floor of the hotel. And if you're seated in the right spot, you can watch the boats pass by while having breakfast. Fleeting has a chef style open concept dining room and kitchen area with an abundance of windows to let in the light and the outside. What I love about Fleeting is that it blends global flavors and techniques with regional classics and it brings the coastline to the table by incorporating hyper local ingredients like the field greens, the seafood and okra. The restaurant has an open kitchen where you can watch your food being prepared and I love how they use fresh and preserved ingredients in the decor. From what I understand, the menu does change with the season to complement what ingredients are available locally. And a lot of those ingredients were included in the breakfast bowl that I ordered. The menu is truly inspired by local farmers markets, seasonal produce, and its proximity to Savannah River. Fleeting's ever evolving menu celebrates the bountiful Georgia coast and the rich history of Southern cuisine. I really didn't know what to expect from my breakfast bowl, but it ended up being a 10 out of 10. The roasted vegetables were my favorite part. They were well seasoned, soft, but still with a little bit of crunch to them. The Brussels sprouts, okra, and sweet potato were by far my favorite part. As evening approaches on day two, you can you can head back to the Thompson if you're not already staying there and treat yourself to an unforgettable lunch or dinner experience at Bar Julian, the rooftop restaurant at Thompson Savannah. The restaurant has indoor and outdoor seating, but we opted to sit outside to enjoy the views. The views from the outdoor deck are so spectacular in the afternoon and just breathtaking at sunset. The restaurant itself focuses on Mediterranean tapas, otherwise known as small plates. But don't let the small menu fool you. The food here is delicious and the views are enchanting from the deck. Look at that golden hour in the background coming from the sunset. It's just gorgeous. Not only did Bar Julian make our list for its Mediterranean food, but because it's Savannah's tallest rooftop restaurant with views of the Savannah River. There you have it. I've solved your dining dilemmas in Savannah, providing you with six exceptional spots for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. I started you off with 22 Square in the Onda Savannah Hotel, then took you over to Bubba Gumbo's on Tybee Island for seafood, and 22 Square for appetizers, then downtown Savannah for dessert at Leopold's Ice Cream. Then the next day, we hit up Fleeting, and then finish the tour at Bar Julian in the Thompson Hotel. I've given you six amazing dining options, but if you want more resources and would like to know where I stay while in Savannah, I will link to the two hotels here. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos every Friday.